Hey everyone, excited to be here. Um, really, really want to thank uh, Ripple and the Catalyze team for their support and setting this all up and giving me the opportunity to talk briefly about what we're doing with artificial intelligence and how blockchain can be integrated to enhance those solutions. Um, if you don't know Futureverse, I'm going to play a little video that will give you an overview of who we are as a company. So there's a lot going on there. I'm going to try and simplify that a little bit, but um, important to know that all of that is built, powered by US, uh, XRP. Um, at Futureverse, we're a media tech company. There's about 250 of us in 16 countries around the world. And what we do is we make protocols to help interoperability happen for content-rich applications. We have one of the biggest AI teams in Web3 with more than 20 PhDs and re researchers building novel generative models for creating content. And we work with the world's largest brands to bring their IP and their communities to life with new products and experiences. Um, we've built the Root Network, which is a side chain to XRPL. And the purpose of the Root Network is it's custom dot designed for brands and IP to be able to manage those, those assets and to create interoperability so that we can have this idea of the open metaverse that everyone talks about in Web3. It really hasn't been done before, even though there's a lot of hype about it. Um, and we have more than 30 custom uh, runtimes and modules built into the root network that help make that a reality. The root uses XRP as its uh, default gas to token as well. So everything that happens on root is, is leveraging and providing utility to X XRP itself. Um, like I mentioned before, we work with the world's biggest brands across lots of different things. So we have uh, mass media players like Warner Brothers, sports like uh, uh, FIFA, uh, consumer goods like Reebok, uh, music partners like Warner Group, um, and big players in culture and celebrity like Snoop Dogg and Keanu Reeves. Each one of these things is building unique experiences using our technology, and we're making them work together. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the AI side of our business. Um, we're in this kind of transformative area that has been um, enabled or is starting to be enabled by AI. Um, and if you look at the previous changes when it comes to creating content in the um, history of the internet, we kind of started very simple with emails. Anyone could be a publisher at that point. Um, they could get their message out to the world very quick, quickly and cheaply. Um, then websites came along and anyone could be a shop. So you could set up commerce anywhere in the world quickly and cheaply. Um, SMS actually came along and said um, anyone can be a brand. So you can create activations with those things. Um, brands started to engage with consumers more directly than they had in the past. Uh, social came along. Anyone can reach you anywhere. And then last we have AI. Anyone can be an agency. 
So now we've got these very powerful tools that give superpowers to everyday people that were only possible from, um, from engaging with expensive resources, developers, and creative agencies in the past. So that's kind of the bedrock of, of generative AI, is it empowers users to be creators of anything. Um, but there's some like risks with that. Um, and one of the big things that's emerging as a discussion at the moment is how do you protect copyright? And there's two sides to that. Um, and one side, you've got the data that's used to train AI models. Um, a lot of the models that are out there today are trained on stolen data. That means they've gone and taken someone else's music or someone else's photos, and they've trained their models on that, and then they're reselling essentially your data without compensating you for it. And this is a really big problem. Um, the other side of the coin is how do you prove something you generated with AI belongs to you? Um, and so that when that first problem you know, gets into a copyright dis group, how do you, how, how do you st um, prove to the users or your customers that the thing you created is clean? Um, so those are like two problems in the copyright domain for AI, and it's a big problem. Um, in fact, we work with the world's largest, largest brand agencies, and almost all of them have put a ban on using generative AI in their creative work because of this problem. They don't want to go to their customers and say, we stole someone else's work to create this for you. Um, so we've worked really hard to solve both of those problems. I'm going to talk about how we did that today. Um, so the first thing I'm going to introduce is Jen. Jen is our unique um, generative music model. And I'll let Jen speak for herself. You can go right now to Gen Music AI and take what's in your mind and turn it into music. And that's a really powerful tool. And that's the kind of thing that generative AI can do. And it's opening up lots and lots of really interesting use cases. Um, we're lucky because Gen is, well, not lucky, maybe a bit smart, because um, we decided from the early days that we would um, take the high road in terms of how we tra train Gen. So Gen was trained only using uh, music that was specifically licensed for generative AI training by the original copyright owners. That means everything that Gen creates is also clean. Um, and so that's a very hard process. It took us about a year longer than most people in this space to get our product out, but we did the right thing. And what that does is open more doors. So now we are working with those big brands and those big agencies because they can trust that Gen was made fair and that it respects copyright. Um, and you might have seen when the, we put the Gen um, video up there, this little tick, the genuine tick. So every time someone writes a prompt in Gen, what happens behind the scenes is we do a few things. One, we verify that the output of that um, prompt didn't create something that was similar to music that already exists and is copyright. Over 150 million songs it's checked against. So even if Jen accidentally makes something that might be similar to someone else, we discard it. And so you get this little tick. Um, when that tick happens, 
we take the information about who made it, so the, the person who put the prompt in, the fact that it was generated on gen, the fact that it was checked for copyright infringement, and we write that on chain. So Gen uses the XLS20 standard to make an NFT for every single prompt on the platform. Um, we've got this out in alpha now, and we've already generated over 30,000 NFTs on XRPL that are verifications of copyright for the tracks that users have generated. Um, we think with maybe 10,000 users, we could equal to about 5% of the daily traffic volume on XRPL. With 100,000 users, we could be half the traffic on XRPL. So this is a really, really interesting use case for driving utility and usability of the ledger. Yeah, why? And that's enabled us to gain this fairly, cert fairly trained certification. We're the only full diffusion music model in the world that has it. Um, so if you put all of those things together, the way we train the um, AI and the way that we verify the IP on chain, we can prove every time to anyone using this that their music was generated ethically. Uh, well, we're not stopping there. Um, we've got one of the best 3D research teams in the world too. Um, and uh, our, our research heads and PhDs are the most published authors in this space, and we're really excited about bringing out Altered State. We're going to do the whole um, thing again that you just saw for 3D content for games and movies and um, online immersive experiences using AI. Here's an example um, of something we actually did with one of the uh, XRPL community's builders. Um, so Zertmon's a, a popular little game in the XRPL community. We took their 2D um, assets and we used our AI to turn them into 3D game assets. No. You can see here a little example of that little guy in the wild. That tree. And so now we're enabling anyone out here to start to be a creator. If you've got music in your head, if you've got a character you want to see come to life, if you're an agency that wants to create something unique and quick for your customer, then you can use these tools powered by Futureverse and built on XRPL. Cheers. Thanks, everybody.